Okay, time to test the Bucking Permanent Magnet Flat Disc Alternator BPMFDA, whatever. So this one has coils wound with Litz wire, high frequency wire. Of LITZ Litz wire and they're around sewing machine bobbins. And these are actually from a Romero UK replica. You know that looper where he put the magnets behind the cores. It has ferrite cores. And I took these right out of there. And there's seven coil positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two open coil positions because it's using nine coil positions and two of them are motor coils. I can for the Muller uh, Romero UK Muller thing. And what he did different was he put magnets behind the cores. And he could get speed up and no lens and all this. It was tricky. I have a video where I do get speed up with when I put magnets behind the course. But anyways, I took the co stator coils out of that. So there's a plate here. And a plate here of coils. And then I have those magnets that are bucking here. Let's see if I can see one. And right in the middle of them, there it's the magnets are bucking. They're north against north or south against south. So I have this also north, south, north south etc all the way around but these bucking magnets there you can see right there they make the field stronger and stretches out further so i was thinking that a bucking field wouldn't have different characteristics than a regular magnetic field coming off the end of a magnet and there should be an air gap distance where the bucking field is what induces into the coils and cores. So I made it so that center magnet, the center where the two magnets meet and create a bucking field, they go right underneath and or on top of the cores, the ferrite cores right there. Maybe you can see it down there. It goes right, right over the core, right next to the core. And it spins really easy. Skateboard bearings. And now what I've done is every coil has a full wave bridge rectifier. I have 14 of them. And every full wave bridge, the DC side fills up a 100 UF cap. So I did that all the way around. And then I hooked them all in series just to see what I'm going to get. And I kind of know what I did this yesterday, but I forgot my camera. But I got 84 volts and 314 milliamps. We'll check that out. That means when I crowbar it for the maximum amps, which means there's no voltage, I get 314 milliamps. And if I just check the voltage, what is the maximum voltage with no resistive load or anything, it's 84 volts, so you'd see. So that's what that is. That's how I check it. 
and then I short the whole thing out over here. All the coils and caps all at once get shorted out and then I see what I get. Um, as far as the draw to the rotoverter motor goes. So with it just spinning this, spinning by itself it's only 30 milliamps and 120 volts. And I did some tests, I didn't film it, I used a Variac and I can drop it down to about 85 volts instead of 120 volts. And instead of 12 watts it's going to drive about 9 watts take about nine watts. The amps goes up a little bit but the voltage being lower makes the watts draw less. So anyways, so so the rotoverter is drawing about 12 watts when we do this test and here is the voltage here is the amps input. This is the voltage across all those generator coils being induced by the bucking ma permanent magnets. And this is the input draw. And we know it's 120 volts because I'm going to just use the grid right here. So that is the test. I have a 4UF run cap. Interesting enough, I don't need a start cap with this. It just gets up to speed without a start cap and I can have the generator hooked up but not loaded but shorted out. Maybe it would even start up shorted out, I don't know. But I can just uh, start this thing up as it is. So I'm going to put this down and put it on the tripod and make a video of this being tested. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just plug it in the grid down here. Start out kind of slow. It'll be the amp draw. How many amps it draws. It's in AC 20 amps. This meter is in DC because it's all been rectified. So the voltage will be in DC. Let's go. One, two, three. Oh, hold on a sec. I gotta turn the power on. Hold on. Okay, you know, I'm gonna give everybody a treat. Or uh, this is uh, the workshop I have. It's at my brother's property. I don't own it, but he's my brother, and he lets me come over here and work on stuff right here. Underneath here, I have this kind of storage. I have a whole bunch of rotoverters and all sorts of stuff in here. I don't even know what, but from the many years. And storage down there. I built this whole thing this roof and uh, did all these pillars it's a really cool piece of property there's a bunch of soccer fields down there called 60 acres this is in Redmond Washington I mow this lawn too like a big lawnmower thing and uh, Here's where I used to have my electric car and stuff. I built this roof and everything in here. I did all the concrete. Look at that concrete. We dug out the hillside a bit to make it bigger. You can get about three cars in here. He has this tractor in here now. I poured all this concrete, or we had a truck come out, a few guys helping me. It's, if you ever do concrete, I think it's really fun. It's really tough work. And uh, so, 
pretty cool workshop. It gets cold though. The wind blows in here, but it's warm now. And here's this. This is a little mini soccer uh, soccer field we made in here with boards around the side so you could bounce it. And, and it used to be a place where people would have a big horse and they'd learn how to ride a horse for polo. And uh, we had a big fake horse in here. Anyways, up here I have all my musical gear, drum set up there and everything. Although my nephew just took the drum set. And I know this is boring. Anyways, I built all this too. What happened is, see it's got a fake grass. And so my niece, my brother's daughters, putting all her stuff in here. So it's storage in here. Sorry this is boring, but I'm just giving you all a special treat. My workshop. It's about 10 minutes from my apartment by car. Um, so that's about it. I guess I'll walk out this way. I bashed apart a uh, old motor I made. Took out the coils. That's what all that is. Lots of threaded rods. Stainless steel. Some some guy put all these. That's like where you throw a bean bag and it goes in the hole. <laughs> Just going to be here for a little while. Behind all these, I got motors. Anyways, so there's the guided tour. Here's my collection of wire. This is 36 gauge wire up here. I was thinking of doing like a three or four parallel. And winding some coils with that. Okay, back up here. Okay, let's go. Enough time wasting. So, can you see the Here it is. Okay, voltage in DC from out of the generator coils. Draw from the grid. Ready, set, go. Hold on a sec. Don't have Try again. Have the bell tuned up. One, two, three. It's humming. the draw 800 milliamps start up there's the voltage a little more than yesterday there's 14 coils and I had about 7.2 per coil volts per coil in AC so this is DC into a cap
look at the draw now. 0 0.07, that's really pretty good. Pretty spinning. There's no coils loaded. Notice I didn't even need a start cap. This is 4 US. Okay, let's get down to business. Now what I'm going to do, there's the generator coils, it makes almost about 87 volts. Also, I could have uh, one, two, three, four, four more coils for about 30 more volts in this, but there's only seven coils, but it's made for nine. There's only seven coil positions, but 14 coils. It's coils on each side of the rotor. But I could have nine coils there, but one of some more coils. The coils are about four ohms apiece. If anyone's wondering. So here we go. Dropping a little bonus. About 87, 86 volts. And like I said, that's good. 0 0.07 times 12. About 9. About 8.4 watts. To, to do this, to spin it. Now, I'm going to do the test like I always like to do, and see what the current is when I, I call it crowbarring, when I uh, short out all the generator coils at once, which are all in series, and I just short them out with an ammeter, and this will give you like the maximum amps. Maximum back EMF, too, really. And watch this go up. It'll go up to about 0.21. Oh, now, if this was a lens-free magical generator, it wouldn't even go up. And I still have all this amperage being shorted out. But it does have a lens effect, lens reaction now. Uh, let's do that. One, two, three. Here it changed tone. Uh oh. What I do? Let me get it up to speed again. I don't know what happened. Seems like it's going 1800 RPM anymore. Oh, you know what? My coupler broke. Hold on a second. I'm talking about this stroke. And now you see it's only drawing 5 milliamps, 50 milliamps. It should be 30.
Well, the fail-safe coupler works. So, I guess I'll call that a, a test. You saw how the amps went up to 0.21 when I shorted out all the coils. Yesterday it kept going at the same speed. Dropped a little bit. This time I broke the coupler. So, uh, sorry for the long-winded video and thanks for watching.